have become much more individualized. Carrying this concept on further, if we take the resonant action of a simple LC circuit, it produces a sinusoidal function. But if we take the resonant action of a tra quarter wave transmission line, shorted at one end and open at the other, not only will it resonate at the fundamental frequency, but it will resonate at the third harmonic, fifth and ninth, and ad infinitum all the way out. And it will produce this waveform. So we can see where we're in conventional tuning, we're using the sine wave. In the transmission line tuning, we end up with rectangular waves. Now, if we take the resonance of a coil instead of a linear transmission line, which is shorted at one end to ground and open at the other end, the harmonics are in phase and we end up with impulses. Now we find with the sine wave, the amplitude is the square root of two higher than what we would, have, rather than one, it would be square root of two higher because of the peak to average ratio. With the rectangular wave, it would be one. With the impulses, it's infinity. Now what I attempted to show here is that in a measurable quantity of time, like on an oscilloscope, I used the black to show what we would see on the screen. Now if we look at a square wave on the oscilloscope, we know that this transition is not visible because the amount of time occupied is infinitesimal. Now with the impulse waveform, the pulses are of infinitesimal width. What I'm trying to show with the shading here is the integration that shows that the energy contained in the wave is the area underneath it. There is no area on this. The amplitudes are infinite. And these are the waveforms that Tesla were working with. And these waveforms would tend to punch through where the continuous waveforms wouldn't make it. Now I have a working model here. If I can carry all this over and not get electrocuted. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work, so I'm going to speak louder. I'm going to have to circumvent. Take, the, take that mic. This is working real well. Not that one, the other one. Yeah, I don't like being grounded by playing with 600,000. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> okay, I have, I have a model of, of the Tesla transmission system. I'm going, to, I'm going to go over this. Take the big mic. That's what I'm saying. Take the one off the stand there if it'll okay. come off. Just set it down anywhere. Don't worry about it. It's called the, the one-handed electrician syndrome. Okay, what we have here is a number of demonstrations. This is a model of the Tesla transmission system. And the diagram up there shows basically what's happening. Here we have the conventional direct current power supply. And we have a small small radio transmitter here, 400 kilocycles, the industrial, scientific, and medical band. Everything is conventional at this point. Here's our antenna, but it doesn't radiate any electromagnetic waves. Now this antenna, as you can see by the RF amp meter, is transmitting roughly 10 milliampers of displacement current into the earth. And this signal can be picked up at great distances through similar devices by transmitting through the ground. There's no electromagnetic radiation from this device at all. There's a very intense electrostatic field, however. This thing is hot. Now the light bulb is the Tesla beam tube that transmits direct current through space. It's hard to demonstrate, but if I had a small electroscope, you would find that direct current is being transmitted from that filament because it's a hot cathode and transmitted radially out through space. And as I tune this device, if the filament is loose, you can actually see the filament expand and try to fill out in the space. There's an actual repulsive field around this device. Now, if we eliminate the light bulb, we eliminate the losses. And then we go to the simple ground transmission mode. And the current goes up to a little, little higher than before, still about 10 milli. This is a very crude, small device. Now, I've built these devices on the 40 meter band and powered them up to about 50 or 100 watts and was successful with simply a coil hooked to a very low impedance ground of transmitting from the San Francisco Bay Area to Los Angeles with 599 plus. No antenna at all. No antenna. 
very intense ground. Uh, 24 ground rods into the salt marsh, the San Andreas, the San, San Gregorio, and a third unnamed fault, all converging. And 500 feet of silicon bronze wire, all connected to a massive copper bus. Now, bas basically, if you view this device, let's start with the quarter wave vertical. Everybody's familiar with the quarter wave vertical. Okay, those of us that love 80 and 40 meters know that the quarter wave vertical is a real pain. <laughs> so what do we do? We wind the coil. Right. So we wind the coil and then the antenna shrinks. But then we want to get rid of the antenna, so we wind more coil. But what does the coil do? The coil has capacitance. And then we keep on shrinking the antenna, and then the coil builds up more capacitance. Until finally the coil becomes its own quarter wave resonance circuit. But its radiation resistance is zero. So our ground impedance must be zero. Because if we start off with an antenna current of one amp, for a given amount of power into a quarter wave vertical, we're going to end up with a pure loading coil with no losses of a current of roughly four or five hundred amps for the same amount of power. And that's going to put a heavy demand on the ground system. But if you can meet that, those poor people in their RVs that have that big coil and no antenna are going to have to turn their RF gain all the way down. And they're still going to be asking what you're doing because they're going to hear every little squeak that your transmitter makes in between. Every bit of power supply hum, every bit of back wave, and they're going to keep on saying QRP. <laughs> and it works. I've tested it. It does work. Now I've developed various analogs of this. <clears throat> I have two analog computers here that simulate these type of waves. I'll move to my diagram here. Just leave it down facing the speaker. Eric, I don't even need that mic, don't worry about it. Okay, well, I got it now. All right. <clears throat> okay, these are the various transmission paths we find on a resonant coil. We have the electrostatic, we have the magnetic, we have the magnetodielectric, and we have the electromagnetic. And all of these paths are circulating around the coil. It's a very complex transmission path. An analysis of it really boggles the mind, particularly for transient cases. And I have to develop a completely new system of algebra just to describe this stuff. And then I did manage to come up with uh, practical algebraic formulas available for the ham radio operator experimenter that are published by a rather obscure or organization up in Eureka called Borderland Sciences. And there's nomographs and tables to calculate your impedance and wavelength and all these things. It's completely engineerable. There's nothing mysterious about any of this at all. Okay, if we look at these constants here, K is what's called the elastance between the terms. The elastance is measured in per farads. Not farads, but per farads. Everything becomes inverted. Capacitance, of course, is measured in farads. This is the electrostatic impulse wave. This is the one that finds its way to the end first, the coil. Then we have the magnetic wave, where L is the inductance in Henry's. M is the inductance in per Henry's, or what we're used to calling mutual inductance. Mutual inductance always has to be expressed as an inverse. It's always in per Henry's, otherwise the dimensionality does not work out and the equations will lead to erroneous results. This really led to a lot of confusion in the, uh, the early attempts of the GE laboratories to ascertain why these complex waveforms they were experiencing in their substation transformers were causing them to explode for no ex unexplainable reason. The standing waves would build up and appear in the center of the windings and puncture the insulation, but yet from terminal to terminal there was no voltage difference. 